Good morning and welcome to My Catholic Perspective. If you are new here, my name is Allie Marie. I am 37 weeks pregnant and freshly 29 as of this morning. Um, on the last Thursday of every month, I do a book review that is voted for by my patrons over on Patreon. And this month, they had voted for a book called The Reflections of James by a gal, um, a fellow, like, social media gal, um, Amy Thomas, who is over on Instagram, at a Catholic pilgrim. Um, but we decided that we would postpone doing that book because she moved to Turkey this month and is kind of settling in and we're going to do more of an interview format in a month or two reviewing that book and kind of getting her input on um, on what she kind of experienced in writing that book as I review it. So um, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, we post every Thursday at 3 p.m. and um, and then you'll be in sync with that video coming up as well. But so for this month, we decided to that I would look at and read The Apostasy That Wasn't by Rod Bennett. And this was sent to me by a patron, by Scott. And um, he told me, because, you know, I am very pregnant, right? I'm due September 16. Uh, baby really could come any time. 37 weeks is considered full term, according to my OB. So, um, so it's basically... <coughs> Excuse me. All about how in the early church there's the whole debacle that when Constantine um, made Christianity the primary religion of the Roman Empire, that he actually took over the whole epitome of what Christianity was. And so when we look at all of the offshoots of Christianity, um, you know, even the ones that maybe you wouldn't consider like fully Christian, but like, you know, Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness or Protestantism, anything. It all goes back to the Council of Nicaea. So it was in 325 and um, a lot of people, because it was in the 300s, early 300s, that like Constantine made this ruling, right, that Christianity was going to be, like no, Christians were no longer going to be persecuted um, and they were going to pursue it. So. Basically, the whole idea is that it's this apostasy that wasn't like, it didn't actually happen the way that a lot of these offshoots of Christianity that aren't Catholicism basically came to be, or even like Eastern Orthodox. It all, it all boils back to the Council of Nicaea. So this book in particular, I learned all of that from the introduction. I tried reading it. I got to chapter five and was so frustrated um, because while Rod, you know, he tries to write in like a storytelling type way, which I would definitely say that this book is a postgraduate book. This is not for somebody who like just kind of like, like reads a book a month or just kind of you know, reads this or reads that. Like, this is for somebody who knows who these characters are in the story because he is constantly introducing new characters, um, preparing for a child to come into the world right now. Like, every time I'd try reading it, I would, I had to stop at chapter five because I started to get really frustrated because I felt like I needed to be on Google every other page to fully understand what Rod was trying to communicate. Um, because he starts out, because he's trying this dramatic element of storytelling, he starts his chapters as like, you know, they're wandering the desert and the mothers are approaching on horses and these people are coming over as the sun rises behind them. And he tries to paint this visual, which is really nice. But if you don't know who Athanasius is, 20th Bishop of Alexandria, I learned from Google, or who Antony is, who was a Roman pontificate, um, or Eusebius of Nicomedia, who is not to be confused with Eusebius of Caesarea, who was a church historian, who I actually had heard of that Eusebius before, um, and he talked about Eusebius for a chapter or so, and I thought I, like, sort of knew who he was talking about at least and then he clarified that it wasn't that Eusebius and I was like oh my gosh 
I can't do this. He's talking about events that have happened in the past that I should just obviously know what like the great something is and I'm like I have I've never even heard of this and so like if you're a postgraduate if you've studied church history or theology even probably um, as a minor you might have enough grasping of who all of these characters are in his book um, because they just keep coming you know you're kind of like okay I'm trying to follow like okay he's saying Athanasius is a redheaded, a redhead kid, and then, um, but then Antony comes in, and now I'm confused, and then, like, I, I felt like it was one of those books that I would understand the second time I read through, um, because he, he tries the storytelling, and then he tries to tell the history, and then he kind of goes back into a storytelling mode, and then he goes back into, like, finite history, but everything that's in the storytelling mode is also supposed to be intertwined with a historical nature <laughs> and be historically accurate. And so it all, um, I, didn't, I didn't love it. I had a hard time with it, uh, but that is probably because I am very amateur. I don't have time to be looking up on Google. Um, but one of the things that I love about our Catholic faith and what drew me in is its genuine simplicity. And I think that's why I, I would struggle to give this book a, like, a good review um, because I feel like it complicated it. I think that, you know, when I read the introduction, it was just all like laid out and historical. Like this is what the Council of Nicaea was. This is where all these divisions came from. It all roots back to this. Like there's the general concept. Like, okay, so let's like look at the Council of Nicaea and what was about it that people disagreed with. But instead, he tries to draw in all these thematic elements, and I think it ends up muddying the waters. And um, and I think, you know, one of my biggest things is that God is readily available to anybody at any time, regardless of circumstance. He is omnipotent. He fully knows all of our experiences and emotions, everything going on. Um, and... I do not care for the complications that complex religion brings into that. I think that there's an element that I found in the Catholic faith through, because I, I converted at 21, um, there's an element within the Catholic faith of submissiveness to doctrine, of submissiveness to authority. And, um, and so there's that part for me that says, well, the Council of Nicaea was valid because Peter was the first pope and, you know, the succession took place and then the bishops came together and ironed out some issues and they get together to iron out issues because that's what long-term structures do when we look at our government or anything else. We have different, you know, presidents that maybe some are better than others or more moral than others and whatever else. But, um, you know, it comes down to that submissiveness and then that simplicity of just saying... Like, there is truth here, and, um, you know, and that's why I say, like, if you're deeply studying the faith, if you are, like, struggling to find that submissiveness, um, and you kind of know some of the backstory of the Catholic faith, or you're interested in it, and you're, like, genuinely seeking and, like, needing to know, this might be a good book for you. If you have the time to, like, look up names as they pop up, and look up events as he mentions them, but actually like means it as a pretty pivotal point of the story, but never goes into detail of what is actually happening. Um, it might be good for you, but for me, for my recommendation, it would not be for somebody who's like looking to understand the Catholic faith. I wouldn't, this would not be a book that I would turn to and say, hey, you should check out the apostasy that wasn't, you know? It's like really good. It's an easy read and I wouldn't say that to anybody. I'd say if you're interested in a postgraduate type book, like this might be one that you'd be interested in. It kind of, you know, makes it a little more fun for someone who already has a basic concept of all of these people. So that's my review. Scott, I do still, really, I mean, I appreciate the book. I appreciate, like, the opportunity to read it and everything else. Um, 
And I'm sure that one day, if like, you know, Lord willing, he brings me back to this book that I have the time to study and digest and like really put my all into it. And, you know, I pray that um, whoever's hands that this book like falls into, I just pray that it helps them as well. Um, I just know for me, I go a little simpler. I like accessible, like truly simple and not complex, like ideologies and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. It just, it was too much for me. So anyway, that's my review for this month. I reviewed another book two weeks ago that I have also been reading, which is called Made for This. It's a mother's guide to a uh, Catholic birth. And um, I've read it before. I read it with our first pregnancy, our first daughter. And, um, and I'm just kind of rereading it now, which, yeah, it, it's just um, really powerful to know that our bodies are made for this. Like we are, women are built to make babies and we are built to gain extra weight. And we are built to utilize that weight in our bodies to nourish our child after they're born. And just kind of accepting all of those processes and like knowing that nothing's wrong with what our body is doing like everything is normal for what our bodies experience while there's a child growing in inside of us so like the hiccups I have or um, you know my inability to properly swallow all the time <laughs> the other day a fruit snack wound up in my ro my nose and my husband and I still just don't know how it happened but Either way, <laughs> we just keep on trucking. Um, I'll probably, yeah, either try pre-recording videos or just take a week or two off after the baby comes. We'll kind of see. We'll be doing a consecration to the Holy Family, which is a three-day sequence. Um, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll do it likely the week after the baby comes home. Um, and, yeah, we did it with Evelyn, so I figure we should do it again with this baby so that the baby has you know, the consecration, but then also uh, we do, I do a live rosary right alongside it. So hope you can join us for that. Do be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. As I said, over on Patreon, we do discuss current events, which there are plenty going on this week. Um, I might end up posting sooner than Sunday because I just don't know when this baby is going to come. And there are some pressing things going on right now that I feel inclined to talk about. So I might end up posting before Sunday, um, but ultimately every Sunday we post, talk about current events. So uh, feel free to head on over there. The link is down in the description. I'd love to get to know you on a more personal level, like through your social media account. Um, I think the membership for that one is like $3 a month or something. So, but God bless you. I pray that he is able to grant you the resources that you need to draw closer to him and in turn those around you. And I pray you are able to make it a great day. We will talk to you in the comments. Take care.